at Plymouth United Church of Christ. We're so glad you're here in our sanctuary and we also welcome those of you on Facebook and YouTube. We are an open and affirming congregation who embrace the LBTQIA community as we strive to be an inclusive church, sharing the life and teachings of Jesus as a healing manifestation of God's love and presence in the world. As a just peace church, an immigrant welcoming congregation with an intentionally accessible building, we affirm diversity in all of its forms, striving to recognize the ways that we have contributed to human injustices or oppression based on race, sexual orientation, ableness, or religious beliefs, and seeking ways to challenge these practices towards a more just community of faith. Toward a spirit of truth and reconciliation, we acknowledge that Plymouth United Church of Christ has been on land whose indigenous ter caretakers are the Menominee, Potawatomi, and Ho-Chunk people. Whether you are with us today as a member, friend, or visitor, we hope that you find a welcome here. Let us worship. Let us worship God. 
Please rise in body or spirit and join in the singing of our opening hymn, This is the Day. That is much uh, standing up is much is much um in, in easier. It is, I agree. Yay! Okay. Yup. Okay, you ready? <laughs> See, if you if if you if you want to so read it together, can we okay. read it together? Let's read it together. Let's read it together. Loving God. We thank you for all the blessings of, of the summer that has passed to me. Thank you. And we pray for your help. A Christian education is about to begin. Let it be a year of shared learning. Oh, God, thank you. Deepen the knowledge of your word among us. I doubt our commitment to the strengthening of strengthening, strengthening a Christian. A Christian. <sighs> Make it a year of shared worship. Oh, God. Thank you. Let our music sound forth with power. Let our chorus sing joyously of your love. Thank you. Let it be a year of shared witness. Oh God, thank you. I give us courage to have some seen and sense of timing. Thanks. Make a year of share of share concern. Oh God, thanks. Compel us to 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 share food and justice for the poor. Empower us. Oh, oh God, you have been you have been our help help in ages past. You alone are our hope for years to come. We are helpful so for we rest our hope in you. Thank you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Nee-haw! Oh God. Oh God, oh God you, you are you human beings who are miniature from the fantasy. Oh 
Stop it, that road. C. It's a new class, Sessions for Learning. We pray. Oh yeah, me too. Thank you. In our care. And um, mindful of the promise that made time we baptize another in faith, that we will assist them to grow in knowledge, in spiritual practices, and in living as disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. How about this here? I know it's raining and that's okay. Today I get to do, well, honestly, anything I get to do with kids is truthfully my favorite, but <laughs> this one is a lot of fun. I get to give Bibles to children. So we have a tradition of giving Bibles to children when they're in about third grade and it's super arbitrary, but the idea is around third grade, most children are able to read Bibles independently. It's it's not a science, it's just a good guess and a place to do things. But the exciting thing, as a church family, we get the opportunity to renew our commitment to our children's walk in faith. So this is an opportunity, if we baptize that child as a baby, to as a church family say to one another and to the children, yes, we are here to walk with you. And yes, we think this is a big deal, so we're going to give you the Bible so that you can begin to explore everything that God has had us record on your own. It's such a cool thing because we are also saying to kids, God belongs to you. It's not something that you have to wait and learn about. God belongs to you. That's kind of amazing. And it's a great thing to remind each one of us, no matter how old you are, if you're big or little, if you can read or not, God belongs to you. All right, so I'm going to invite some of my friends up here. Hocken Lumens. Avon Redman. Michael David Howell Smith. Do we have any other church friends or family members that are children who haven't yet received a Bible from us and they're at that age where they're ready for the full Bible? I have lots. All right, next. The Bible is yours from birth. And so one of the ways that we support families is we offer you your very own beautiful storybook Bible because the Bible is accessible in so many ways and one of those ways is through some of the most beautiful illustrations because our brain receives information in a lot of ways. And so if there's any families that are new to us that haven't received a storybook Bible and your child is younger than third grade, or if you're not new but like you haven't gotten one yet, would you like to join us now or would you like to receive your Bible later? You wanna come get a Bible? No? All right, come, what, don't leave, don't leave, stay with us. We wanna give you a prayer. Check this out. You get to have it forever. Because God is yours, God belongs to you. All right, I'm super excited, and when I'm super excited, I have to do big loud prayers. So put your arms up high. Thank you, God. For all of these children. Thank you, God. For their families. Help us to remember 
that this is a shared walk. And that you belong to each of us. Amen. I'm so excited. But before we go to Sunday school, we've got some big kids that are doing some really cool stuff. So let's have a seat in the front row and check out what's going on with the big kids. And then we'll sneak off and play in Sunday school. Good morning. We're an exciting day in the life of our church. Um, so we have some friends are not here this morning, but if you are going to be doing confirmation night this year, I want you to come forward so people, our younger kids, can um, see you. Please come. See one in the back, or maybe thinking. Okay. <laughs> I know it's not your theme, but that's okay. All right. So they will be making the journey through confirmation. It's something we're doing new this year is that we're doing confirmation for two years. I know. <laughs> it's going to be a fun time, fun ride along the way. And so one of the things you want to celebrate, I know many of you have already received the Bible, but one of the things as we are journeying through the Bible and we are going to, as part of our opening uh, time when we do youth group and confirmation, is that we'll hear the scriptures, and we'll do that today, hear the scripture and we'll have a chance to reflect on it. You can either sketch it out or you can um, maybe reflect on it um, in your journals that you'll receive this morning. And then over the next two you graduate, you'll leave it in youth group. And then when you graduate, we'll give it back to you as a gift to you. Because you can remember your time here in youth group and all of the things and how you've grown in your faith. And so we want to celebrate you this morning as you journey along the way. Um, and then we'll have, I know Mackenzie, you're going to be a part of the youth group too, so you come on up this morning as we celebrate all of our, our youth. I know, you don't like to do that, but thank you for coming up this morning. As a youth member, we have the others that are uh, had other engagements this morning. We want our younger kids to see that there are other youth and that they'll be here in maybe a couple of years with a smile on their face too. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> And we want to thank, like, Daniel has cut our grass over this, he said, the grass has been cut, he's done a great job cutting the grass uh, this uh, summer season. So let's thank Daniel for that. <laughs> and then for, before we go into, we have a commitment card. We don't leave our adults out. So just because they're little, they're getting third grade Bibles and Bibles because they're, you know, they're, you know, part of uh, the congregation, and then they're getting journals. We too are committed to the life of our church. And so I want you, um, as we start this program year, that you can think about what a part you want to be engaged with. There's an opportunity for children's ministry, youth ministry, adult ministry, you can be part of the senior ministry, food ministry. Scripture reading, we love to have you do that. Bible studies, there's ways to engage. There's lots of things to do with this church, and so we're not just coming on Sunday mornings, but we're engaged in the life of our church. And as we do, our blessing for all of our learners. As we gather here today, we remember our, our role as learners and seekers of the faith. We give thanks for all those present or away who support the teaching and learning that takes place through our congregation. Be with all children, youth, and adults who will be participating this year in our church school, Christian formation groups. Bless our times of study so that we may grow in faith. Bless our times of fellowship so that we may truly live as friends and siblings in Christ. Bless our times of prayer and worship so that we may be enriched in our spirits. Amen. Amen. So children K-4 to fifth grade are dismissed to go upstairs to Graham Chapel. And we'll have our youth leave out right after the anthem and scripture. Our first reading today is from Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our gospel reading is from Matthew 20, chapter 26. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. 
Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The final reading is from First Letter to the Thessalonians. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Here end the readings for the day. morning. Please pray with me. Sir God, be with us in our time of sharing this morning. And God, what I prepared is not what you have in mind, but God, that you will put it aside, that you will speak boldly in this place. For we need to hear a word from you on today, for this is my prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever had to pray a help me prayer? One where while you were praying that the outcome will not be uh, knowing that it's not a bed of roses, but we pray to God to see us through it. Help me prayers. Prayers where a loved one is diagnosed with a terminal illness. 
help me prayers where this time it won't be a DUI and a, a slap on the hand, but this time it's a jail sentence. Help me prayers where you're not going to remain together as a couple, but the best outcome is that we remain civil to one another. Help me prayers. My job is the one that's going to be downsized. Help me, God. Have you ever found yourself on the other side of these types of prayers or praying that in the internal chambers of your heart that you can relate to where we find Jesus in our text this morning? This morning's text is one in which we often use at Easter. We usually don't visit this text at length, but in this text, Jesus, who had, we see often who has his composure and one who heals and one who sits with the marginalized, that we find that Jesus is agonized at the point of death. He's agonized by the burdens of his soul. And Jesus cries out, help me, God. That in today's passage, we hear about Jesus praying in a garden. It's a garden of olive trees at a place where called Gethsemane. Gethsemane means oil press. It was probably a place where that the oil, olive trees that uh, were pressed and used for what well, we olive oil. And maybe you are there today that you find yourself pressed on all sides. Like olives that are pressed under extreme pressure in this passage, Jesus is facing extreme pressure. Jesus is pressed um, with the reality of betrayal, the reality of abandonment, the reality of a denial of his inner circle, people who had, he had dined with and had been with for a long time, and the reality of injustice, the reality of impending crucifixion, and worst of all, that he couldn't change the situation. It is the sorrow of many people in our country who maybe find themselves, you know, suffering, maybe on trumped up charges that they're innocent, maybe with the innocent projects like Herman Williams, who served 29 years. Maybe it's the suffering and pain and the anguish of those who we celebrate on 9-11, the anguish or pain of their loved ones. Maybe it is the suffering of those who we remember back in the last, the end of the school year, the parents at Uvalde as they waited on the sidelines for their children to come back, but they never did. Maybe it is the suffering of those who sit in these pews this morning the violence that we see too often in our community. Several of the words in verses 37 and 38 are filled with appalling pain of the anguish of Jesus. He was sorrowful and troubled. He told the disciples, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. That is his prayer. You feel the agony and pain in Jesus' voice. Jesus says, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours. The first thing we learn is that Jesus is very transparent with God. He says that, you know, I am, you know, it, he doesn't sugarcoat what he's going through. And that's why we use the, we're using the book, Anne Lamont, Help Thanks Wow. And she talks about just telling God really how it is. We don't have to have dressed up prayers in order to pray with God. It's simply a communication with God. Jesus understood that what lay before him was not going to be good. And often when we are in need of God's help, we are desperate. We don't have time for flowery prayers. We can't eat. We can't sleep. That we are anxious. We see Jesus anxious. He has three of the disciples by his side. And he knows that one of his disciples left the dinner early to hand him over to the authorities. For one thing, Jesus knew the crucifixion lay ahead about the torture and the pain, that his breath, the physical frame becoming weaker that as he was standing on the cross. And Jesus had finished the Passover meal. He takes them to Gethsemane and he tells them that a while that he is there, he is going to pray. And he leaves most of the disciples there and he takes Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. These are the three, his closest friends. He goes off to pray, and James and John, they remain at a distance, and he, they pray as well. And I liken it to when I'm driving, because they, the, the disciples, they go to sleep. And he says, you know, you're supposed to be there. We're praying with me. You know I've already told you what is to come. 
And I liken it to sometimes I'm in the car and I have one of the kids, I'm saying, like, you stay awake while mom's driving because you wanted to go this place. And when I look back, that they're all asleep. I'm like, I thought we were a team, you know, we're three people in the, on the road, but they left me high and dry. And I think that that's what Jesus was feeling, left high and dry. And so Jesus prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Some are, sometimes our prayer for help doesn't come out the way that we had hoped. That Anne Lamont talks about a prayer for her mom that she was praying that her mom had um, Alzheimer's. And she was praying that, and she had a cat that she loved, and she was like, God, please just let my mom just be able to die in her home. But God didn't, she said it didn't request, get her wish. And so her mom ended up having to go to an assistant, uh, move from assistant living to a nursing home. And so she began to talk about, like, moving from a place of help me, God, to a place of faith that Jesus began to move from a place of understanding that the situation at hand was not going to change. Jesus says that the answer to his prayer was no. Have you ever had some closed doors? No, not going to happen this year. No, the adoption that will not go through this year. The promotion will not go through this year. No, COVID won't go home. It was here to stay and even brought a monkey pox with it. Jesus prays that same prayer a third time. He seeks out help, and Jesus knows the end, but in the human nature, he is acknowledging that he does not want to suffer, and he says, yet not my will, but your will be done. Jesus models for us that we all face battles of some kind or another. We face battles on our jobs. We face battles in our families. We face difficulties in our health. Maybe the car breaks down. The children, they get sick. They, they, you know, you are going out the door and something falls all over the floor. You just have little things that happen to become, just kind of throw you off track. I remember watching the news this week that they said in Franklin that the school routes were canceled for about 20 routes and parents had to figure out how they were going to make it happen. I remember watching on the news and a woman said that she just broken her leg and so she couldn't drive her kids, she had three kids, to school and how she was going to make it happen. And sometimes our prayers don't come as answered. In our world with injustices that we see around us, this story have re resonated with those people. They too had suffered persecution and arrests and were threatened with execution. It's unlikely that they would have been spared any of the problems, maybe if they were to have to go to the cross. And in the end, they would probably have felt abandoned by friends, family, and even God. Help me prayers are great. We will pray them often. But what happens when the things that we have been praying for, what happens even harder when we are still waiting for change to come and we don't see it? How do we move our prayers from sorrow to help me, God, that we can get in a rut? We can get in a woe is me, that, and I can name all of the things that are going wrong in my life, things I want to change, and when things are not going right, and how do I move from help me, God, to Thank me, God. Thank you, God. God, I thank you that maybe in we, we prayers of thanks, they go maybe sometimes things are still not worked out right, but we can still name the things that, that are going right. Maybe I thank you, God, that even though I don't know what is around the bend, I thank you anyway. I thank you for closed doors because that assures me that this isn't the answer that you have at hand for me. Maybe the thank you prayer says, I thank you that you are with me even in the difficult times. I thank you for God for the kindness of people who are with me as I navigate the sickness before me. Maybe the prayer could be is that, is maybe their prayers maybe for you who are in this room today. Can you name some thank you prayers? Thank you prayers that maybe you're praying this morning. Any prayers that you have this morning? Maybe it's thank you that God got you up this morning. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the choir. Thank you, prayers. God is good all the time. Thank you, prayers, that maybe you have a house. It may not be the house that you want, but you still have covering. Maybe it may be, you know you not like the clothes that you're wearing this morning, but at least it is it's better than some people. Maybe, thank you, prayers, that maybe you may not be able to move like you used to, but yet you'll still be able to come in here this morning. 
Our text from Psalm 136 and 1 Thessalonians 5 declared that we should give God thanks all the time. And sometimes it's hard to give God thanks. And I get this message this morning because I got a message. I asked um, Paul Klebar because I said he was, he's in the office with us and I was sitting at my desk and he was saying sometimes, I mean, he must have saw my face because he got some bad news and I was like, and I was just sitting there. He says that sometimes, he stuck his head in the door. He said, sometimes even when there are problems in my life, I simply, I learned from my parents to, that there are sometimes there, there are bad things, but I still have something to give God thanks for. And so that's our message this morning, that maybe we pray prayers of help me, God, but help us to move to a prayer of thank you, God. I want to leave with the words of Psalm 136 because it reminds us of the times when maybe that we can think about all of the things that are going wrong. But Psalm 136, it says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for God is good. Oh, give thanks to the, for our God for God's steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for God's steadfast love endures forever. Who along uh, great wonders of his steadfast love it endures forever. Who, whose understanding made the heavens for his steadfast love endures forever. Who spread out the earth on the waters for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to our God and his heaven for his steadfast love endures forever. I know there's problems around us that maybe you came in with heavy burdens on your heart this morning. And yes, it's good to give, you know, give a help me prayer to God, you know, and be real about it. But what the scriptures declare in from Matthew 26 and then from Psalm 136 and 1 Thessalonians 5 is that even though that there are problems in our lives, that we are called to give God thanks. We just can't remain in a rut, but God declares that we are to move to a place of thanksgiving. Alleluia and amen. amen. As we enter into our time of prayer, we want to lift up these people within our community and these concerns. Prayers for Emma Landowski Sandholm on the death of her cousin, and Nick Sandholm, her husband, on the death of his grandmother. Um, Emma and Nick have had a very hard year with several deaths among their close family, and we want to keep them um, lifted in our hearts and minds and prayer um, to give them strength uh, as they deal with this new time and this journey of theirs in life. Uh, prayers for Sheila Faye Shaw for her upcoming surgery. Prayers of healing for Emily Roshan. And prayers of thanks for our people who are behind the scenes doing the hidden work, uh, mostly in the kitchen and in the, oh, did I turn it off? The whole time? I'm sorry. We can hear you, I, you have a good voice. Okay, I hope you can hear me, I wasn't. Button's in the wrong place. Um, we um, wanna give thanks for all those people that do the behind the scenes jobs, uh, especially Ben, 
who does our custodial work and um, other support staff. They do the work in the kitchen, the cooking and preparation for a lot of our events. Um, ben was here late last night, apparently, um, doing a lot of cleaning and uh, he was working in, the, working in the bathrooms, cleaning after there was a wedding here yesterday. Um, so he was here late and he was here again early this morning to set up um, for our um, events after church and that includes being out in the rain. We want to continue to pray for the Phillips family, Anne and John Bales, Pat Gima, Xavier and Isaac Sawyer, and Orchard Utzinger. And now, if you would please join our hearts in prayer. Merciful God, we gather this morning filled with gratitude, hope, and longing. We thank you that you have provided for us in all ways, and you have provided in abundance. You are the one true source of life, and you call us back to you always and in all ways, giving us hope for this life and the next. You call us to care for your people, both near and far, neighbors and strangers alike. On this rally day in our church, we come together after being separated by protracted COVID concerns, summer vacations, time focused on family, ideology, and self-interest. We come home to this community, our faith family, thankful for each other's being and thankful that we share our joys and sorrows and that we love and support one another in all things. We come home to this community with spirits that are refreshed, ready to rekindle our studies in church school and adult education. We come home with renewed energy and resolve to spread the good news. The world is so full of threats right now, diseases, forest fires, floods, tropical storms, urban violence, war, and rumors of war, that sometimes it seems impossible to see past the sadness, fear, and suffering of this world. But when we remember our relationship with you, O oh God, and remember your grace, we see beyond the heartbreaking fragility of life. And we know that we can trust in you to protect us, to teach us, and to guide us in the living of our days. We pray for comfort and healing of all in this world who are living with emotional, physical, or spiritual pain. We offer special prayers at the death of Queen Elizabeth II a mother and grandmother, and one of the great world leaders that embodied and embraced compassion, service, love, and peace. We especially lift up these from our own community. Emma, and Nick, Sheila Fayshaw with her upcoming surgery, and we ask 
for prayers from everyone, and we ask you for healing for Emily Roshan. And thank you, O oh God, for Ben and other staff who support the many things this church does and the people of this church do in service to others as well as in using opportunities to be a community of faith and a family. Grant all of these people healing, protection, and strength. Bless the firefighters, police, the healthcare workers, and others who toil and sacrifice each day to help and protect us and to assuage people's pain and suffering. May all know your consoling presence. Loving God, you call us to be people of compassion. Grant us wisdom and generous spirits as we strive to understand others and to care for others. May we love extravagantly and unconditionally. On this anniversary of the tragedies of 9-11, we remember those lost, and we remember their families and friends. We vow to never forget the sacrifice of so many. The lingering grief is real and deep, and our continuing fear that something like this will happen again causes us to be fearful and suspicious of strangers and those who are different from us. Help us to remember that love and hope are greater than fear and suspicion. Now in silence, we offer up prayers from deep within our hearts as we reflect on that sad day in our history. We pray these prayers in Christ's name, and it is in Christ's name, with Christians across the centuries and around the world, that we continue our prayers to you, who is both our mother and our father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
you haven't had a chance to make sure um, if you can sign the red pew pads, it gives us an opportunity um, to know that you are in worship today. So please pass the red pew pads around your row. Just join me in our prayer of dedication. God of wisdom and understanding, send these gifts into the world. Send this offering to your people. May these gifts be bread and blessing. Our concerns over common life. Just a reminder that um, so today after worship. Um, we have an indoor picnic, of course, <laughs> and all the rain that we had, but it still be fun. Um, so lots of food, and we thank um, Matilda Ward for um, uh, cooking our um, hamburgers and hot dogs, and we do have veggie burgers. Um, the second discussion of the book, Help Thinks Wow After Church, is in the lower study. Um, so um, Russell Booker is leading that, and meet with Kurt Anderson at the City Market in Whitefish Bay on Silver Spring for their first initial meeting on Tuesday at 1.30. Next Sunday, the Sunday School is hosting an open house for parents and an opportunity to sign up to volunteer. Join us also um, next Sunday, September 18, Plymouth Justice Network was leading us in worship. Bring a picture of your pet or your well-behaved uh, well leash pet for our pet blessings uh, service on Sunday, September 25th. We look forward to that. Stewardship campaign begins um, soon, so at the end of this month, we'll be sending out um, packets uh, in the mail at the end of the month um, with our letter. First Wednesday's dinner is on October 5th here at Plymouth from 5 to 6, so we're calling our first Wednesday. And then along with that, we all kick off our four-week Centering Prayer class from 5.30 to 6.15. Please RSVP and pay for the class by September 21st. We're going on an all-church picnic and hike and canoe trip at Pikes Lake at West Bend from 9 to 12 on October 8th. Um, and then this, um, by, it's being sponsored by one of the nature centers. So RSVP and pay um, canoeing um, by September 21st. Please rise in body and spirit and join in singing our closing hymn. We are marching in the light of God, number 526. Oh, seriously, put the hymnals down. Stand up, though. But the words are, we are marching in the light of God. And there's an ooh in there somewhere. OK, you really don't need the hymnals. And frankly, the, the version in the hymnal, it's really hard to follow to figure out what you're supposed to be singing. So don't look. Um, but we are going to make you sing it until Suchin and I think it's loud enough. And he could play pretty loud on the djembe. So just keep rolling until we say it's good enough, all right? Oh, and there are uh, volunteer sign-ups on the table in the commons. New ones. <laughs>
remember last week we did the, the prayer uh, stations, and so this is what we were able to create together, and so we thank um, Sheila and Stephen for leading that for us, that station for us. Thank you. Our benediction, let's read it together. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can, have a great week. Mm -hmm.